John Bray, a newspaper cartoonist, uh, created Colonel He's a Liar in 1911, uh, created the first commercial cartoon series, uh, increased production through patented, the patented processes. Uh, in 1914, patented many, uh, print many copies uh, of a background on translucent paper, which is a method of a range of gray tones. It was tried to enforce it was tried to enforce his patents through licenses and fees. Uh, Bray came very close to modern production techniques. In 1914, uh, I think this was written one way. 1914, John Bray, uh, let me just give you a little small piece of background on John Bray. John Bray, he's in that, that handout here, the picture of him is in the handout. John Bray was uh, an animator or a cartoonist that he started in New York, he had the Bray Studios. John Bray felt that the only way animation could be successful was that he would be the one who actually was in charge of it. That would be the only way. He felt that it wasn't like he was like a, 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 this, this devious type person, but he felt that only he could thrust animation uh, into the world and, and, and make it a reality that we know of today. So what he did is, Every person who lived in his time period who was interested in animation, if they came up with any idea, whatever it was, John Bray, he would invite them to his home. Um, he was the one who was married to, uh, to a woman who worked in the patent office. And they would look over whatever the invention was, um, and then they would ask, you know, do you have like a, do you have a copyright on it? And if the person said no, and in those days, uh, animators, they, they didn't think that somebody was actually going to try to, you know, have some under some underhanded uh, objective and try to take their stuff. So they would just honestly say, no, I don't, I don't have, like, protection for it. Oh, that's unfortunate. That's un Excuse me for a minute. And they would go, and the wife would drop some papers, and then they would ask, well, could you, could you just leave the, like, the, with the peg bar? Uh, uh, they would ask, you know, can you leave the peg bar here? Uh, and... Of course, the person would, would consider, yeah, yeah, we can leave it. You know, we want to look at it some more. Yeah, just leave it here. You know, they leave it, and then John Bray would take it, and he would put the patent out, he'd sign his name, and he'd take it there, and he'd make a, copy, and he'd make a photographic copy of it, and he'd, he'd have a patent on it. Then he'd call you back, and he'd say, okay, I forgot that I had a patent on that idea. I made so many different inventions for animation. I forgot. We'll just keep this here. And... That way, nobody won't, you know, nobody won't be, you know, stressed out because I don't want us to go through like any legal type thing. So we'll just keep it here. That, that will be fine. I'll, if you need to use it, I'll let you use it. And that's what he did. He went on. He went on a quest, acquiring things that actually new developments in animation. He went on a quest to get that. Uh, the statement here uh, relates to the fact that in animation. They were getting very close. The Winsor McKay animation, the Gertie the Dinosaur, what Winsor McKay hadn't uh, realized yet is that you could separate the character from the background and it would be a lot easier. That way you wouldn't have to draw the background over and over and over and over again when you're drawing different uh, uh, changes with the character's movement. But until that point, they had to literally just draw the background and hope that the background would stay in place. You know, and when you see Gertie, it, it's... It's really a, it's really a, a tribute to this man's skill because it doesn't move that much. The background doesn't move. The lines, they kind of stay right in place, which is amazing. That's <laughs> amazing. Uh, but anyway, um, John Bray, uh, he had a, a partner named Earl Hurd who worked with him. And Earl, just like Disney and Oob Iwerks, Earl was the one who actually came up with the clef. He came up with the design. He came up with the. Geez, I'm actually telling you guys the answer to this. Uh, Earl Hurd, let's just put this way. Earl Hurd was very influential <laughs> in the success of animation. Uh, okay, I'm telling you guys the answer. <laughs> Earl Hurd, okay, in 1914, uh, he had a patent. Uh, drawing complex backgrounds on. That's actually the answer. On paper, which characters inked and painted on clear celluloid on top. Uh, and in those days, even the animation sales. Had parts of uh, film had parts of uh, nitrate in them, and they were actually they were still sort of explosive. Um, I'll just go ahead and say, Earl Hurd, what he did is 
he came up with a way because he thought it was just so tiresome to draw the character in the background over and over and over again. So what he decided to do is he said, why don't we make the background on a separate piece of material? It'll be on like a sheet of white paper. And then we'll put the character on a, on a transparent sheet of paper so we can see right through the background. And that way we won't have to keep drawing the background. And that became, that became such a revolutionary idea to the, even this day they still use that. You know? And that's the, the reasoning behind what they call the sales and the, if you're using like a Toon Boon or Flash, the layering system. Uh, this, this guy was the guy who, who thought that up. Earl Herb was the guy who thought that up. Animators didn't like the method because the original work wasn't shown on the screen. Uh, Earl Hurd, 1916, does the Bobby Bump series. Okay, Raul uh, Berry. Is it Berry or Berry? Uh, Raul Berry actually was the one who had the first, uh, and he's, he's supposed to be the one who had the first animation studio. Uh, uh, he was the first to use the PEG uh, system. The PEG system is a, it's a plastic or metal uh, strip. It has like a, three little like uh, placements in it where you can punch your paper and you put them on top of the, the little place like areas and it keeps the paper from sliding around so it's registered, it stays in one place. Uh, and that was, a, that was a clever idea in those days too. Um, he developed a slash and tear system. Basically the slash and tear system was to take the character and cut them out. They cut them out and then they would place them on top of the background. Uh, that, that method actually didn't, didn't uh, carry on only because the task was too tedious and people didn't like doing that. Animators were that, even of that day, they, 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 they got tired of doing that. <laughs> he was the first to draw the background on long sheets of uh, paper. So he was the first one to add the idea for the, they call it a pan. And, and to you, to you that know don't know what the terminology means, just say it this way, a pan is when you see like a Fred Flintstone cartoon you see Fred running through his uh, living room, and you see like uh, a couch there and a TV set and a, and a, and a uh, end table, and then he runs, there's another couch, a TV set and a, and a, and a table. And then you see another couch, and <laughs> that's uh, what you do is you make a long sheet of paper, and you draw the entire background on that, and you put your character somewhere in the middle, and you shoot your character running in place, and you just pull the background towards you creates the illusion that the background is moving and the character is moving in the background, but actually it's, it's all an illusion, it's just a trick, it's not really doing that at all. But it's, it's very clever. Uh, he also, they say he also invented the animation disc. Uh, wow, this guy was really onto something. Uh, the animation disc is a circular disc, you guys have probably seen it if you went in 301, that the animation uh, light box that Kevin made, it actually has like the little round circular disc. The disc has like three little, it has a peg thing sitting on top of it. There's supposed to be a hole so you can turn the disc. Uh, sometimes when you draw, if you're drawing something, and you find yourself having to turn the paper, you have to turn your body to try to get to get like a certain angle. Well, this is made that way so you can turn it, so you can get that angle without having to shift your body into a different position or something. We don't, we don't have that, we only have that one that Kevin made. Okay, Max Fleischer Studio. 1917, he invented the rotoscope technique, uh, which created more natural movement. Um, Max and Dave Fleischer, these two guys, Dave actually would don the suit, and uh, they would film each other moving. They would film himself moving around, and he would later go back. And there's a, there's actually an example of the the rotoscope system. I think is in here. 